Okay, I guess it's time to get started. So welcome everyone to Flights Community Meeting. Today, my March 5th. And uh, well, it's great to see you all here. Couple of reminders. Uh, first, well, this meeting falls under Linux Foundation Code of Conduct, so you can feel safe here, hopefully. Uh, second, I hope you didn't face any issue uh, trying to join the meeting today. This is the first one we run under Linux Foundation some account. And um, yeah, I, as some other projects under the Umbrella, we migrated under this account. It basically doesn't require you to create a Linux Foundation account. You can join as a guest. Or if you will be coming here recurrently, you can create one. Um, yes. Um, let me, someone is DMing me around the link. Um, so it usually happens. Cool. All right. Um, so yeah. And the other thing was a reminder that everything is rewatchable. So you can go to the flight YouTube channel and there's a community meeting playlist there. Uh, we used to have a playlist for every year. Not sure about the reason. So I've been slowly but surely consolidated, consolidating everything to a single playlist. So you can go back in time and explore meetings even um, as far as three years old back, which is great. Um, cool, so let's get started. I'm sharing again, if you're just joining, welcome again. I'm sharing here the agenda. Uh, this is an open document, so you can go to uh, the top left corner of the document and click the edit button. You can add a question or discussion topic in the open mic section. So this meeting is, is yours also, so you can uh, influence the agenda also. Cool. So we said, so let me see. I see some um, new faces. Not sure. Is Anyone here joining for the first time? Yeah, and if that's your case, feel free to briefly introduce yourself. Totally. Yeah. I guess it's my first time today, but I'm also a guest speaker, so I'll say hi. Uh, nice to meeting everyone here. Uh, my name is Harrell. I work at Datadog as of actually three weeks ago, so brand new job, before that astronomer, um, and I'm a committer on Open Lineage, which is what I'm here to talk about. So hi everyone, nice meeting you, I'm based out of New York. Awesome, thank you, Hilo. Welcome, eh, anyone else? Well, pretty much. Long time members. Welcome, David. Morocco, great to see you again. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Rafa, great. Long time not seeing the community meeting. Welcome. Awesome. All right. Let's move to the next item in the agenda uh, community project updates. So I will share my screen real quick. Here, um, there you go. No, not that one. Okay, cool. So the first one is uh, we're rolling out a survey that we ask you all to participate, and we'll be also reaching out to some folks in the community um, to ask for your feedback regarding this specific meeting. By the way, so we always strive to make this a useful resource for you all. And uh, we, we don't want to run blindly. So your feedback will be super appreciated. And uh, by the end of the survey, it's a really short survey, like two or three questions, nothing more. And by the end, you, you will get a link where you can request uh, flight swag that we will ship to you as a little token of appreciation for your time. So. Yeah, definitely will be really useful to have your feedback around this specific meeting, the content, how to make it better. Cool. 
thank you in advance. The other thing is that I'm setting up kind of the the infrastructure for the plugin inventory working group. This was an idea that that uh, we gave birth uh, after the last community meeting where we got some feedback from from Marty Jorda uh, around the status of some plugins. So we'll be collecting basically a list of uh, the current existing plugins, who's maintaining them, and more importantly, the status. Are those plugins working or not? And for this, we will need the community. So I'm, I'm, uh, I've been setting up some of the infrastructure for this. Uh, I'll be kind of sharing this a bit more in detail on Slack. Uh, but if you're running flight with any of the integrations being a backend plugin or any other type of plugin, probably we'll need your help to confirm whether the plugin is working or not, or what are the missing um, elements uh, for, for that specific plugin. It could be documentation, code, etc. cetera. Uh, so it, it's, we, we won't fix any plugin. That's kind of the scope of the working group right now. It's just uh, perform an assessment of the current status of the plugins, right? So yeah, definitely we'll be poking some of you to ask for your help. Cool. Uh, yeah, some updates around the upcoming release. Uh, finally, agents will go GA. I don't know if Walter is here. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry too call you out, but I don't know if you wanted to give some overview on what's coming for the next release. Yeah, I, I want to say just one thing. Um, we've been at work, you know, um, working on, on agents for for some time now, and it's finally getting to GA. Agents is this, this completely new way of interacting and extending flight, like it's an extension point that people have been writing agents left and right. Um, yeah, expect like a, a big push in like um, in terms of documentation. We want agents to be really the way people think about extending flights going forward. We're not abandoning like flight kit plugins or anything. Like this is purely for for um, the, this more complicated way of extending flight, and um, we're making that easier. And this is really a call to action to the community. Like if you think that, you know, if you think of a, of a, of a, of a interesting way of extending flight, talk to us, take a look at the, at the, the agents docs. I think um, it will massively increase the, um, the productivity of, um, of contributions and, and the power of flight in, in, in general. So I'm pretty pumped about 111. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Nikki. Yeah, just added a link uh, to the docs. Uh, there's also a recording from the last flight school episode where Kevin went over all the kind of the framing the problem and uh, also sharing live how to write an agent, a sensor for flight. And uh, that's awesome. So I will also leave a link for that here in the notes. And also here, this one. Yeah, thank you, Nikki. Uh, this is great. Cool. Any question, comment around this one? Um, I need to fix this. All right. Nope. Cool. Thank you all. All right. All right. Now, without any further ado, we'll move to the next section, next item in the agenda. So it's great to have her all here. Uh, I've been, I've been kind of spending some time with the Open Lineage project recently. It's been the interaction has been great so far, and her all was, was um, really kind, um, volunteering to be here and kind of go over not only the framing also the problem of data lineage, but how specifically Open Lineage addresses this. So with that, welcome her all. Uh, you already introduced yourself. So yeah, anything you can uh, say before your presentation or we can go straight to it. Uh, thanks for having me um, and thanks for, for tuning in. I'll try to make it not too long and 
feel free to uh, interrupt me. I'll I'll be sharing screen and I'm in a meeting room, so I don't have a second monitor, so I can't probably won't be able to see things, but just jump in uh, and, and scream at me if if you have any questions. Um, another background, I like I don't have any background on flight. Um, there are some parallels, I'm, I'm sure, with some other things in the industry we've uh, in the data ecosystem we've worked with on open lineage. So if you have also ideas on how we can improve on lineage or how to, we can work together, I uh, would definitely appreciate that. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, and let's see. All right. All right. Slideshow looks good. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So what is data lineage? Um, so this is more of a, 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 a live room kind of question, but kind of maybe show of Zoom hands, how many people here know what data lineage is? Have one hand. Yeah, Sammy. Two. Okay, I'm gonna give some background on it. Um, so, all right, so what is, is data lineage? So this is one way of explaining it, uh, which is basically it's it's metadata about data pipelines, right? It's things like where data comes from, uh, how it changes, and then where does it go, right? Uh, we can look at data lineage from the perspective of a data set, and then a data set can say about itself, who created me, who produces this data set, or who consumes this data set. We can also have a viewpoint that of a job, right? So a, some process that runs and reads data sets from a thing and outputs data sets from a thing. And here, when we talk about data set or job, we can talk about, like, this is very abstract terms, right? So a data set can be a table and a warehouse, a file in S3, CSV, whatever, right? A thing that contains data. And a job can, again, be whatever, right? So it can be... A, a flight component, which I, again, as I said, know nothing about. Um, so this is what we kind of imagine when we talk about data lineage and the components in it. Um, data lineage is not a new thing, right? Since people have started working with data, data lineage has been a component. Um, and in that sense, there have been several strategies to kind of collect lineage information. Um, and I'll go through a few strategies uh, that have been used, are being used, will probably continue being used, and, and talk about some of the trade-offs between them. Um, so one thing you could do is you can observe a data pipeline as it runs, integrate with a data orchestration system, with the framework that's running the computation, or basically the thing that's running the thing, the, the, the data pipeline can speak about itself and, and report lineage as the job runs. And there are several attempts at that over the years. Uh, but basically, the, the, the approach here says, you know, the job runs, you know what's happening, you have the context, observe um, which data you're reading, which data you're writing, and then report that to a lineage repository. Um, so this is one approach. Another approach is you can integrate with you know, a, a data store or a warehouse that has um, activity logs. And then you can process those activity logs and use that to trace lineage. So, you know, if I'm looking at, um, at activity logs and then I can see, for example, that um, let's say there is an insert into from select, then I can infer the lineage between those two tables, right? If it's a SQL statement. So that's one way. Um, and then another way is we could analyze source code, right? So we can integrate with source code repo, crawl it, parse uh, queries, parse jobs, and try to infer lineage from it and report that to a repository. Um, and so these are a few kind of approaches. And But the reason why I kind of went through all these different approaches is to bring home the point that collecting data lineage is a lot of patchwork. Um, it's a lot of trying to use different ways of bringing together 
the full holistic piece of information. Um, and so, so we have some background on what is data lineage, how we collect it potentially, um, why do we need it, right? So when you're in a team, let's say a data, data engineering team or a team working with data, you usually know between members of your team what's going on and you know kind of, you know, a, a service you're working on or a pipeline you're building, you know who is reading it, who is consuming from the thing you're doing. Um, and so generally people have a good sense of what's going on. But when it starts to scale beyond a single team, this is where things start to get a lot more complicated and you start to have a lot of implicit contracts uh, between teams through data sets, right? So team B can be consuming a data set that team A produces and they might not even know about it, uh, that a certain team is a quote unquote customer of their data set and they're now a stakeholder and they care um, about what happens. Um, <laughs> Sammy, thank you for that. Um, no, it's, by the way, these are big shout out to Ross Turk for preparing those slides from the open image community. Um, Ross is a far better presenter than, uh, and, and creator of content. Anyway, um, so kind of things start to become really complex when you have the, the further your ecosystem and the further, uh, your organization grows, right? And so the other complicating aspect of it is data ecosystem, right? Like we've all seen these slides and this is just, this is a 2021 slides. I'm sure some, some companies or frameworks are no longer relevant. I'm sure some aren't here, but the ecosystem is very complex and a single company or, you know, a single entity that's trying to build a data pipeline might use might mix and match a bunch of these components, right? So kind of how do you, like the fact that you have all these different components and you have all these different teams, is, it just kind of increases the complexity uh, of trying to get a sense of what's going on. And then if, if you have a central place where you can look at lineage, that would be useful. Um, and just think about the possibilities of what you can do with lineage data. So obviously the kind of trace dependencies between Applications and services enable products like a root cause analysis product, right? So we can tell you, hey, you, you have all this lineage data, you can go upstream and find the root cause for what broke down this pipeline. Um, I'm about to make a change. Um, so who am I going to impact, right? You can think about using data lineage as part of your CI CD pipelines and say, oh, can you check for a thing before you push it out to? You're not breaking something that's downstream of me. Uh, there's a lot of compliance regulatory use cases for it. Um, and I'm sure there are things that are not on this slide, but this, just to kind of give you a sense, right? There's There are also operational use cases, right? So think about something broke down at a specific point in time, and then I can backfill intelligently um, and not having to rerun the full downstream graph, just run the parts that are relevant. Um, and here are some lies from vendors about lineage. Uh, it just works, it's in real time, you get 360 visibility, it's powered by AI and it's easy. And the fact of the matter is that it's neither of these things. It's a whole lot of work, um, but we believe we in the open lineage community believe there's a way of at least helping get to a, not make it, it's not, still not gonna be easy, but it might be easier uh, for all of us as a community. Um, so let's jump in to talk about open lineage. So I think as we kind of reflected on the ways you could collect lineage, some of the, the things that I wanted to, to bring up was, you know, in our perspective, the best time to collect metadata is when the thing is happening, right? So if you you imagine like taking a picture, you can look, oh, well, the sign is here and I'm at this place and like the rocks are here. So I can say, oh, probably the time is 26 minutes to sunset. Sunset was 5 p.m. So it's 4.30, right? Um, or you can just look at metadata from your camera that tells you exactly what time it is. Um, and so we believe in open lineage that the same approach applies to trying to capture data lineage and metadata from jobs. You just have more context that's kind of available 
as the job runs as as compared to kind of observing it after the fact. Um, and so open lineage is pretty much a standard uh, that's open to define collection of lineage metadata from pipelines as they are running. Um, one note on that, uh, we're also a sister LFAI and data team. So there's the whole kind of open source governance um, aspect to it. Um, the other note to add is that the spec is evolving because it's a community and people give feedback and we're kind of trying to balance out between moving to service all the kind of users of the community, call all the members of the community, uh, but also make sure that the spec is evolving in a way that's backwards compatible and people and things don't break for people. So for example, one of the things that happened that we've introduced to the spec recently is static lineage. So this goes against everything I set up until now, um, but the community asked for it and people wanted to, to be able to combine both lineage that, that's extracted operationally at runtime and collect previous observations. Some example use cases, data, data catalogs really care about uh, a cold bootstrap, right? So you just join, they wanna crawl everything in your warehouse and kind of upload that uh, centrally and they wanna use the same spec to do that. Um, okay, so let's show example, for example, where open lineage fits in today. Um, and I can definitely see, you know, flight joining at the top here. Would love to see that, of course. Um, but basically you have producers of open lineage events, open lineage data. Um, they send out the events to an open lineage receiving backend. Some examples below, either open source um, or commercial through clients. Uh, these are all kind of parts of the transport. Uh, we currently have a Java and a Python client. Um, can add more. The, the, the client is very pretty thin and uh, it's more around the spec and the integrations that are built into specific projects. Um, kind of what people had to do before we introduced Open Lineage as a specification is basically everyone had to do every single thing, right? So you're trying to integrate with a SQL engine or a warehouse or a scheduler or a BI tool, then you have to integrate with all of the, the, the possible combinations of the things. And every vendor and every open source project had to do that uh, if you're trying to reason about metadata and extract lineage. Whereas with open lineage, everyone can produce the same spec. Everyone can consume the same spec. We can have a shared language. Um, and that takes away the very annoying work of writing a lot of integrations um, when trying to observe data. Um, a quick show of kind of where the community is today. Um, these are just flashing logos and I'll take this opportunity to thank all the contributors that got to us to where we are today. Um, and hopefully we're gonna see more and more contributors from different open source projects and companies um, to, to paint it to, from a um, kind of producers and consumers. So on the left side, you'll mostly see Kind of open source processing, uh, like a, either processing frameworks or um, scheduling tools, uh, data quality tools. Uh, all of these have integrated open lineage and are producing events. Um, Airflow, for example, adopted open lineage into Airflow's repo. But for a lot of these open lineage integrations, they live within the open lineage repo. The North Star for us is that the Open Lineage repo is strictly a spec and it has no integrations and all the integrations are built into all the different producers. Uh, that's gonna take a while. So we're bootstrapping that effort. Um, and then consumers, you can see a bunch of different consumers from data observability tools to um, just cloud vendors to um, data catalogs. Um, one thing I kind of glanced over is that there is another sister project called uh, Marquez. Uh, Marquez is a reference implementation of a lineage collecting backend. So if you want to get started quickly, seeing how open lineage looks like, how it feels like, what the events look like, how do I visualize them, then Marquez is a great way to start. Um, and this is kind of a quick overview of what a lineage collecting stack would look like. Um, so you'd have your 
you know, Airflow, Spark DBT, producing lineage. There will be an, a collecting API and a repository. And then you would query that and provide some user interface uh, to look at the data. Um, usually it happens using a push model. So as the job runs, um, in the case of an API call, then you kind of make a REST call to the backend, um, stores the events, and then that gets analyzed later. Um, I'm going to go quickly over the data model. So we talked a little bit about kind of the, the idea that we're collecting lineage as things run. In that sense, when we talk about runtime lineage, uh, basically everything we collect is a run state update, right? So a job starts, a job runs, and then a job completes. Uh, so there are several states there. Um, and so to that end, we have three core entities of the model. There is a job, which is a thing that runs, um, and we can attach different facets to it. I'll go into facets a bit more. Uh, and then there's the instance of a job, right? So let's say I have a job that calculates how many users logged into my website today, and it runs every day at 9 a.m. So the job run uh, is that single instance of running at 9 a.m. that day. Um, that job also consumes and produces data sets, um, which again can contain facets that we'll talk about. The schema is, a, is defined as a JSON schema spec. It's on the open lineage repo. You're very welcome to look at it. Um, and so for, for example, this is a typical event series, a very simplistic one where a job starts, it would send a start event. The start event may contain the run parameters and maybe a, a, a get, get shot to the, um, to the commit. Um, and maybe the complete event sends some output statistics about uh, the, the data set. Um, so that's one option. Um, just to kind of show you the, the states in the life cycle. So they said before, job starts, long running jobs. If you think about streaming jobs, for example, they kind of stick around for a while. Uh, so there's the ability to add checkpoints as part of running a streaming job. And then there are terminal states, right? Like the job completed successfully, it could have failed, or a user aborted it. Um, there's another other, um, like literally other state uh, that's used for things that might also happen before the job starts. Um, it's just not in this uh, slide. It's a recent addition to the spec. Um, and then what you do with it afterwards is where a lot of the magic happens, right? Because lineage is built on correlations, right? We observe jobs. We observe that something, a thing, a process consumed a thing, produces a thing. Um, that's where we kind of observe what happened. And then to stitch lineage together, we have to correlate. And the way we correlate um, is a, has a lot to do with naming conventions, right? So as part of the spec, as part of how people write integrations, we make sure that everyone who talks about a table in Postgres talks about it the same way, right? So like we have um, the schema, the, the host name, like all of that is in the same order. So every time we know how to um, correlate between, um, let's say an, an Airflow job writing to an S3 bucket and then a Spark job picking that up. Um, so we know that they use actually the same data set and we can correlate that. Um, I said, I'll explain a bit about facets. I'm kind of running here because I also want to make sure that there's enough time for Q and A, but um, facets are, so as we said, the, the model, the core model itself is quite simplistic and, and abstract. And then facets are easier way for people to add more information. And so not everyone needs the same level of information. Also some people or some companies may want to do things internally. So facet really, facets really enable that uh, by allowing users to define their own additions um, on top of the core entities. Uh, some example facets, um, statistics about a data set, uh, the schema of a data set. Um, for a job run, we can think about, I think I mentioned that earlier, like what was the schedule time, the job run parameters, um, dependencies. And, and really the, the list is much longer and you can go 
into the Open Lineage website. Uh, uh, sorry, the Open Lineage Docs website, and see a few examples. Um, if you want to get started using the Java client, you just kind of create a new client and start to emit run events. Um, or if you're using one of the tools that's already supported, um, then you can use the Open Lineage integration. Um, and that's where a lot of kind of magic, or when I say magic, is a lot of engineering hours um, that instrument these different frameworks. Um, a bit about how this started and where we're at. So the way it started is it's kind of like we're trying to make soup, but you don't really have anything and you don't know where to start. So you put, so there's this fable, you put Someone puts a stone into the soup. It's like, well, that's all I have. And then someone else comes in and they put a carrot. And then someone else comes in and they put a potato. And and everyone kind of joins in as a community. And then we have soup. Uh, but the more people join, um, the better and faster the projects actually start to run. And then it becomes easier because you have more people who care about the thing and more integrations who that that are now supporting the spec. And then over time. This gets bigger and bigger um, and ideally gets out of anyone's control and becomes a full community thing um, that we all like to see. Um, so I'll end with that. Uh, you're welcome to join the conversation um, in the Open Lineage community, either um, on Slack, on GitHub. Um, there's the Open Lineage Slack channel, the Marquez, which is the reference implementation. Um, it's actually the originating project for Open Lineage, but uh, that's more of a history lesson that I'll let others talk about at some point. Um, and I'll share the slides and links afterwards. So thank you for listening. And questions. I know this was, no one interrupted me. I didn't stop for questions, I'll say, but... Uh, Hopefully this was good and useful. Carol, awesome, awesome presentation. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, I have like a few questions. I just to start off with one though, like, um, how do people usually end up like actioning the lineage? Like, so say you have like a breakage. Is is it like a UI? Do you are you able to kind of look at the different artifacts and kind of preserve a link back to maybe the system that ran the did the run it would be great to hear you talk about that a little bit uh, of course so um so marquez is kind of like the open source ui for that and maybe i'll i'll show this slide really quickly um but this is how marquez looks like or actually this is how marquez looked like probably two years ago um marquez has improved a lot since but you know, you have a graph of jobs and data sets, and then you have extra detailed information um, that you can look into. Usually what, I, what, what I've seen is people use an open lineage accepting backend. So like, for example, they use a data catalog that accepts open lineage. So they hook up their jobs to that data catalog through open lineage. Um, and then the data catalog that supports open lineage doesn't have to support all the different integrations um that they have so that's one way that a lot of people do that uh, other ways is not just for data catalog so some companies have stood up their own internal platforms for lineage um, some of them actually using marquez some of them using marquez in a combination of a data catalog um so i've, I've seen all kinds really did that answer your question john Yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks for showing the UI. It's it makes sense to kind of show it as a, a DAG structure and with the different metadata. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and if you go on the Marquez repo, there's like a quick get started, spin up, um, like a GitHub virtual environment, and see how it works. Like it literally takes I think four minutes, and you can see that happening in real time. Awesome. Uh, Keaton. Hey, uh, Harel, uh, thank you for sharing. I think we probably have this, talked about this some time ago. I've also discussed this with Data Hub. I think some of the community members have integrated flight with Data Hub on their own. Some people have integrated with Amundsen, of course, at Lyft we had on our own. And so 
uh, it's good to see that there is more consolidation to create one API so that you don't have to maintain 100 integrations. Uh, uh, interesting thing for me, and, and I, I think one of the initial Open Lineage founders, um, I forget the name uh, that Julian. I talked. Sorry? Julian? I think Julian, yes. Uh, so my comment to him, and I think it's, maybe it is just incorrect, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but the versioning component is missing uh, within this lineage, because lineage as a point in time, specifically with the AI uh, world, like point in time correctness or lineage is more important than as of now which is also important, don't get me wrong, but I think point in time is very important. And do you guys have plans for it or how are you guys thinking? That's a great question because uh, Marquez actually does that work of, of versioning. So we wanted the spec to be um, kind of as easiest as possible for the producer because the producer of lineage doesn't, like they don't necessarily know that they produced a new version of a thing, right? Like they could just be accepting a job and running it. And, and we're observing that and they, they have no notion of historical runs, right? So the stitching of versions actually usually happens on the open lineage accepting backend. So Marquez does have, uh, and, and if you go to the Marquez website, you'll see there's a, there's a data model that captures data sets and data set versions. And then you have jobs and job versions. Um, and then job versions have job runs actually. And so a job run consumes a data set version. So for example, let's say that the schema change for a data set, then the backend looks at the previous event from this job and says, oh, well, this last time the you know the checksum was this and now it's this. So let me create a new uh, a new data set version that connects to this new job version because ideally the job also changed to reflect the changes from the incoming um, data set. And then to your point, that's where the magic of like what products you can build on top of this happens, right? So that's where you can look at the graph and for example, compare two graphs of like, hey, this job fails failed today. It didn't fail yesterday. Can you overlay these two graphs and show me the root cause of where actually things started breaking? Um, and that that's, yeah, you can do that. You can build those on top of Marquez. The, the, and I, I understand, but I think it's like doing heuristics or magic, right, over there to try and understand versioning. This is where I think difference with a compute platform like Flight is, where Flight is versioned at the core. It knows what's going through and what's changing. So if there is a deeper integration, I think that might be better for the community because it. Uh, otherwise, you are like losing semantic information. Just you're dropping information on the floor that you know, and then you're trying to reconstruct it uh, doing magic on the other side. So it's like, you know, instead of using the correct potential, we are dropping that potential on the floor. But uh, from an integration point of view, it should be relatively straightforward because flight has an egress event set. So everything that flight does is egressed as an event stream, including task executions and workflow executions and who launched and so on. Uh, so, uh, if somebody is open to writing a, a, a lineage, open lineage creator, that would be great because that's just would work with almost all providers. Um, the action would be, as uh, John asked, is the more interesting part to me because I think with these two things, there's a, there's a natural way of building something way more elaborate, which allows you to not only see, observe, but react to certain things. Um, so, yes. but happy to discuss more about this but this thank you for the presentation really helpful yeah and and that's great and that, actually that's where facets can can play a part right so extending um with a flight facet that has versioning all right we could also agree as a community that we have a specific facet for versions when the producer of lineage knows about versioning and then the consumer knows about it and doesn't try to infer it and kind of uses what the system knows to tell and then when you're linking back from uh, from the kind of repository, you can preserve, you can persist the URL to a specific workflow version or even a specific execution version, which is immutable in flight. 
and you could actually rerun that execution directly. So that's why I was asking about actionability. Like if you don't need to recreate the whole environment config infrastructure in order to just press the rerun button, that kind of like makes the lineage a lot more, more powerful. Uh, I fully agree. Now I'm even more excited for a flight integration. <laughs> Yeah, probably you already answered most of my question, but yeah, in, in general, what would it take to build an integration with Flight or any other system? I mean, how to how to make a how to build a producer for Open Lineage? Uh, I, I'm for that. Not sure. Yeah, I mean it's a great question. Um so you so it depends on which language you're using. If it's in Java or Python, then you start with the Java or Python clients. Um, we can add more clients. That's not a big deal. So you you can use the OpenAge client to generate events. You pull that into um, your framework, and then ostensibly there's a point in time in the code. So you know, really depends on the architecture, right? And I really don't know anything about Flight's architecture to say anything smart here, but like in the Spark example, right? With Spark, there's a listener interface that you can listen in on events as they are happening. And that was a good way to tap into the workflow, right? Um, and so you have hooks in different ways along the execution. So before the job starts to run, each step as it runs and the logical plan. So it really depends, right, um, on the project. But I will say this, the Open Edge community is very, very supportive uh, and will help anyone who wants to to try to, to create integration will definitely invest time in that. Yeah, I think this is what I was saying, David, essentially it's through the egress event. It's the same listener interface like thing, like Spark. It, it does, language doesn't matter because it's a pub sub. Um, so you can implement in whatever language hosting infrastructure matters, right? That's the, that's the thing that that's why we don't build it today, because if you flight itself is a massive beast to host and now you're like, okay, now you have a event streaming thing to host and, you know, to make it reliable, you probably need Kafka or whatever, or, or, or a cloud agnostic way of doing pub sub, uh, and then having a, the, the listener running somewhere, which means it's not a simple part, right? It needs to scale up and so on. Uh, and then, you know, finally the egress side is, yes, open lineage, which is great. But this, uh, to build it, probably it can be run as a flight workflow, which is a streaming job, uh, David, itself. But, you know, somebody has to build it. Um, so, yeah. I think I I, ha I do have ideas. I can definitely have people on the flight side itself, but we would love contributions. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Yeah, and thank you again, Harold. It was a great presentation. Any other question, comment? Nope. All right. Well, with that, again, thank you, Harold. Oh, yeah, Brittany, please. And welcome, by the way. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Um, sorry, I don't really know what I look like this morning, so um, it doesn't matter. Um, the, hi guys, thank you for um having me. Uh, this is my first um, I guess join for for you guys. Um, I am in the process of um, well. <laughs> I call consider myself an enthusiast of of the developing uh, stages of an application, um, but I'm also in school for um, engineering, so uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So um, I have kind of gotten to the point where I'm not now intrigued by like literally everything, um, everything that has to do with technology. I'm like, I want to try that. I'm downloading that, and I have all these apps on my phone. Um, <laughs> The point was behind that was just so you guys kind of know a little bit of small personality about myself. I got on here and I was like, dude, I'm the only girl here, bro. I couldn't believe that just myself, you know, um, but it's cool. Um, I kind of have to sh show, I guess, myself who I am. Um, I'm here genuinely because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, one, I think that this is an amazing <laughs> platform, like, just like reading about it, um, there's a lot of things about it, even just the the Docker image. 
Um, I thought that was like pretty sick that you can take that. And um, anyways, I was wondering, um, is there a certain point that you guys are going to be able to get at? Or I don't know if you, maybe you're doing it now where you can, um, let me try to explain it without sounding like I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, like when you can collaborate machine learning, because that's like what I really want to focus on. And um, you guys' information. So it would kind of be like getting on GitHub and you learning the first stages of coding. It's like, okay, well, I don't want to, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying it's cheating, but I don't want to have to clone or do something. I want to make my own code. But it's, you have to start kind of with a code to be able to learn um, how to put in APIs or, or SDKs into your computer or your terminal. Um, are you guys able, because you said open source, are you guys able to, um, have a glossary maybe at one point where it's like machine learners can get on and say um you know beginning stages of them learning i don't know if that made sense to anyone um maybe i can add a little bit i think uh britney firstly thank you for joining and there are i think few other women on the uh call here i um i know some so uh <laughs> And and thank you for increasing the uh, you know the number. We would love for more women to join the call, uh, and this is completely an open community event. Please, uh, uh, to answer your question, uh, I'm I'm I I think that one of the parts to the question would be: Are you uh, talking about flight or open lineage? And because we had two open source things talked about here at the moment. Oh yes, of course. I'm so sorry. I, I should flight. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, so yeah, so right is currently uh, you have to download and run and uh, things so on. We uh, uh, so I also work at a company called Union. We are trying to make it so that many people, without having to understand how the things work or deploy them and so on, we want to make that easily accessible. That's one of our goals, right? That's uh, and and with that comes collaboration and how do you really uh work without having to learn there's like so many things to learn in ml and ai that is just unbelievable today uh even for somebody who's been working on it for 10 years it's impossible to keep up so don't don't beat yourself up that you <laughs> that uh, you're not able to keep up and about learning i think the best way is to be part of the community join in ask questions um be in the slack if there are things that you're confused with, ask questions, give people time to respond. Like you can, you know, they sometimes, everybody has good intentions to respond. It just might take some time. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of smart people here, like even Harel from the uh, Open Lineage community, right? You can join that community and learn more. And so uh, I think that's the best way to start learning. We have examples, we have put first issues. You can, you can start learning, contributing, and slowly, you know, things happen and people get, you start learning a lot more. And at some point you'll be like, hey, I know all of this. How can I do my next thing? So that's my recommendation. I hopefully I answered your question, but uh, firstly, thank you for joining and you know sharing. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for um, the response. Um, I definitely can keep up. So that wasn't um, my issue there. Um, I am just more of wondering in a sense of um, when I become um, able to comfortably do my own thing, uh, building a glossary for myself this is just my my pure idea um, we all have them it's just kind of who you share it with um i want to be able to have a glossary where um everyone can get on like open source and um kind of weed out the things that we all had to do as you guys had to do as an en engineers and someone that's developing and and, and uh, programming where it's like the tough times for them but like when someone goes in and does it um, they can kind of make it easier for them and focus more on their um, developing or their programming. So it's not a lot of, and I don't want to say just coding, but a lot of, of like the back end, the hardware, things like that. So thank you. Yeah, and thank you again for joining. I will reach out to you with some resources uh, that hopefully will get help you get started. Awesome. All right. Any other question? No, I don't see anything else in the agenda, I think. So with that, 
thank you all for joining again. The next meeting, which is scheduled for April 2, we will have a team from Adarga AI. They will be sharing uh, their journey with Flight, how they will, how they're transforming their ML platform with Flight. So make sure to join. Uh, so with that, thank you. Thank you, Harrell, again. It was great to have you here. And uh, hope to see you in the next one, everyone. Have a good day.